Hi, I am Dr. Vaseem Sheikh. In today's video, we will talk about solid solutions and the rules for the formation of solid solution. In the previous video, we have discussed about types of point defects. So let us just list these types of point defects and let us see what we have covered in the previous video. So we have covered the vacancy atom and we have covered self interstitial atom. So the third one is solid solution and there are two types of solid solutions. The first one is substitutional solid solution and the next one is interstitial atom. So let us see what are the solid solution, how they are formed and what are the rules for forming of these solid solution. So as we know, you know, there are a lot of impurity in the atom and you cannot avoid formation of these impurity. So a pure metal consisting of one type of atom is not possible. There will always be some impurity or some foreign atoms in the material as in point defects and you cannot avoid them. Even when we buy any material or when we buy gold, you know, we say that it is not 100% pure gold. It will be 99.999999% pure, but no one will give you the guarantee that it is 100% pure because they know that some impurity, some point defect, some sort of foreign atom or particle will always be there in the material and it can be at a level of 10 raised to the power of 22 to 10 raised to the power of 33 you know in 1 meter cube of material so such type of defective atoms or point defects are there in the material which you can't avoid thus most metal are not highly pure and they are alloys of other materials so we mix two type of material and we make an alloy of the material so as an example if we take pure silver and we try to make some jewelry out of it the the jewelry which we make will be not that much strong so what we do is we alloy this silver with some other material like copper and when we put some certain amount of copper in the material that particular material is called as sterling silver and when we make a jewelry out of sterling silver it will be very strong it will be corrosion resistant and so on we get some better property which are not realized when we are using pure silver so that is the main advantage of allowing that when we intentionally add some foreign some foreign atom in the material basically we get some good mechanical property so that is one main advantage of allowing and we can get good and better property than any pure material. So the addition of impurity atoms to the metals which result in the formation of solid solution and a new second phase. So and or new second phase. So basically when we are adding impurity atom, it has certain rules and when these rules are not followed, when these rules are broken, we get a new phase or a second phase is formed and solid solution is not formed so let us see what is that rule and what is you know how these are formed so, but first we will discuss about solutes and solvents so in this regard of an alloy basically you know we can define the solid solution in terms of solute and solvent so a solute is an element or a compound which is present in minor concentration and the solvent is basically you know the greatest amount of the host atom so what we are doing is basically we are adding solute to the solvent. So solvent is the host atom and solvent is the foreign particle or foreign atom which you are adding to make a solid solution. So solid solution forms when as the solid atoms are added to the host material the crystal structure is maintained no new structure is formed and atoms are similar in size and value. So there are some rules which needs to be followed. If these rules are followed only then we will get solid solution like the crystal structure and the valence and all these things should be similar. We will come to that. So what are the different types of solid solution? So let us discuss what are the different types of solid solution. Either you can substitute a foreign atom with the host atom or you can put this foreign atom in an interstitial site. So in an earlier video we have discussed that all the crystal structure they have some empty spaces in terms of the interstitial space and these interstitial space are there, these sites are there. When you put these foreign atoms 
they can go either in that interstitial site or they can substitute the host atom so these two possibilities are there so for the substitution type so for the first type you know the solid or the impurity atom it replaces or substitutes the host atom and then it takes that particular site and it removes that host atom from that particular original site and it takes the position of the host atom so several features of the solute and the solvent atom determines the degree to which the former dissolves in the latter so there are some features which needs to be taken care when these two solute and solvent are dissolving in each other so here is an example of a substitutional solid atom so we have a crystal structure where the blue atoms are there but suddenly in a normal site which has to be occupied by the blue atom suddenly you have a foreign atom or foreign particle which is there and that goes into the host site and it replaces or substitutes that particular host site so again a few example where we can see the solid solution of b in a so here the copper dissolves in nickel so this is an example of substitution solid solution so the copper atoms are orange atom on the left hand side when you see the nickel atom are the gray color atom which are there and then they have they are basically taking the place of the nickel atom the copper atom are taking the place of the nickel atom and then again they are randomly and uniformly distributed but they are taking the place of the host atom on the right hand side you have potassium chloride that is dissolving in sodium chloride so here you can see that potassium is taking the place of sodium here so that particular you know is a substitution impurity which has been added and it is taking the site or place or substituting or replacing the host atom so now let us move on to interstitial solid solution so interstitial there are a lot of interstitial sites which are present in the atom in the crystal structure and then the the the, the foreign particle or the foreign atom will go in this interstitial site so as an example here we can see carbon in iron so as we all know steel is nothing but carbon is going in an interstitial site and it is sitting in the interstitial side of iron and we are getting the steel so we are getting steel so here we see b in a b is nothing but it is the carbon atom which is going in an interstitial site so here this is the most important thing either it substitutes or it goes in an interstitial site or the gaps which are there in the host atom so this is an example of a interstitial solid solution now there are some rules which are to be followed when we are having these solid solutions which are forming if these rules are not followed basically we will get a new phase we will not get a complete solid solution complete solubility will not be there so these rules are called as hume rothery rules so there are four rules in hume rothery rules which we have to completely satisfy to get a solid solution the first is the atomic size factor so when the host atom and when the solutes are going in the host atom the difference between the atomic radii should not be more than 15% so if the atomic radii is more than 15% then complete solid solution will not form a new phase will form or a partial solution will form so here it should be less than 15% in terms of atomic radii now the second rule says that it has to have a same crystal structure the host atom and the solute atom both should have the same structure as in if it is bcc it will have a bcc structure the host and the sol the solute and the solvent both should have bcc if both are fcc only then the solid solution will form or else the solid solution will not form the third is they should have similar electronegativity factor and if this is not satisfied again you have a partial solution or you have an intermetallic compound that can form the fourth rule is that it should have same valence again if the valency is not same then again you will have a partial solution so all these four factors are to be satisfied only then we get a complete solid solution 
So here in an overview of the entire point defects, remember we are talking about vacancies, self-interstitial and substitution atom. So the first one we see the vacancy. So the vacant site is there and it is not filled. It is creating all particular stresses. The second one is a self-interstitial. So the same host atom is going into some you know gaps or creating an interstitial site somewhere and the third one is an impurity interstitial that means we are putting something from outside as in you know maybe uh, carbon in steel uh, carbon in iron and you are doing a impurity atom sort of adding impurity in the material so that can be there and the fourth one is substitution in substitution you are getting a solid solution the size can be big and small but it should not be more than 15% in terms of atomic radii and if it is more than that then complete solid solution will not be formed. So I hope uh, you understood what we talked about today the solid solution and what we talked about in terms of the rules for getting the solid solution. If you like the video please uh, give it a thumbs up if you want to watch more such videos you can log on to my channel you can subscribe to my channel and look for more such videos and thank you very much all the best